The third meaning of alaka is congealed clot of blood. And today's science tells us that in the initial stages, the blood does not circulate. And the blood clots in the vessels and it appears like a congealed clot of blood. So all three meanings of alaka, alhamdulillah, today's science says, is in perfect conformity to latest advances made in embryology. It further says, we placed it in a kararim makin, a place of security. And we know today that the fetus is protected posteriorly by the spinal column, that the backbone, as well as the posterior muscles. And anteriorly, it is protected by the anterior abdominal wall, by the amniocorionic membrane, as well as the amniotic fluid, which protects the child. So the science today testifies that the child is well protected in the womb of the mother. It further says we made the alaka into a mudga. A mudga means a chewed like lump. So Professor Keith Moore took a plaster seal and made it look into a leech like substance, initial stage of embryo, and then placed it between his teeth. He bit it to make it appear like a mudga, a chewed like lump. And when he saw it, the teeth marks, it resembled the so mites from where the nerves develop. And the Quran continues, we made the mudga into his ama bones, then clothed the bones with lahem, that is flesh. Then we made it altogether a different creature. So what does the Quran mean that we made it into altogether a different creature? Till this stage of mudga, izama, lahem, chewed like lamb, bones, flesh. Till this stage, today science tells us, the initial stages of development of a human being is similar to the development of a fish, rabbit, and many other animals. Only after this stage does the human development differ in looks, where we have a head, then we have limbs, then the Quran says, we made it into a different creature. Glory be to Allah, who is the best to create. Imagine, the Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. And Prophet Keith Moore, he said, that this description given in the Quran, based on shapes, alaka, leech-like substance, mudga, chewed like lamb, izama, bones, laham, flesh, is far superior to the divisions made in modern embryology, where we say stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. It's difficult to identify. The description given in the Quran is far more superior and much more easy. And previously, the scientists, they thought, it was in the 16th and 17th century, when scientists like Swamadam, they thought that the sperm contained the miniature human being. The head of the sperm contained the miniature human being and then it grew in the womb of the mother. Later on, when they came to know that the size of the ovum is bigger than the sperm, D. Graffe, he said that the human being is present in the ovum and not the sperm. Later on in 18th century, Mao Paratis, he propounded the biparental theory that both the ovum and the sperm is responsible for the creation of the human being. They fertilize, they form the zygote, which the Quran has described in great detail. Furthermore, the Quran says in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 5, that we have created the human beings from a minute quantity of clay made into alaka made the alaka into mudga, partly formed and partly unformed. This verse of the Quran was taken to Dr. Marshall Johnson, who is the head of the Department of Anatomy in Daniel Institute in Sir Thomas Jefferson University in USA, in Philadelphia. Now we have come to know in science that if at this stage we cut the embryo and we analyze the organs, we find some of the organs are formed, some are not formed. So Professor Marshall Johnson said, if we describe this stage of the embryo as a complete creation, it will be wrong because some organs are not formed. If we label it as an incomplete creation, that's also wrong because some of the organs are formed. So there's no better description than the description mentioned in the Quran, partly formed and partly unformed. In Arabic, it can also be treated as differentiated and undifferentiated. And Professor Marshall Johnson said that at this stage, some cells are differentiated, some are undifferentiated. Further, it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 9. 
that we have given the human beings the faculty of hearing and sight. It's mentioned for insan, chapter number 76, verse number 2. We have given to the human being the gift of hearing, sight, and feeling. So the Quran first speaks about hearing, then it speaks about sight. And today science tells us the first sense to develop in a human being is the sense of hearing. By the 22nd day, the year starts to formulate, and by the fifth month of pregnancy, it is completed. And later on, the eye splits open, that's in the seventh month of pregnancy. So the Quran is perfect in conformity with science. First come the sense of hearing, then come the sense of sight. There was an experiment done where a baby whose mother was a typist, a newborn baby was taken, and the mother of that baby was a typist, and that baby born to a typist was placed along with other nine babies who were born to normal mothers who were not typists. And the typewriter was sounded. All the babies were scared except the baby of the typist. Because the baby of the typist was used to hearing the typewriter in the womb of the mother. So the baby was used to it, so he wasn't scared. You know, there are many hadiths which say that the pregnant woman should read the Quran. Today, science has confirmed that when the mother is pregnant, when the lady is pregnant, what she sees, what she hears, what she listens, has an impact on the child. I would just like to mention two more things before in my talk. The Quran mentioned in Surah Qiyama, chapter number 75, verse number 3 and 4, where the unbelievers say that after we have died, after human beings have died and have been buried and their bones have got disintegrated, how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, be able to reassemble our bones on the Day of Judgment? So Allah gives a reply that tells them, Allah can not only reconstruct the bones, He can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of your fingers. What does the Quran mean by saying, Almighty God, on the Day of Resurrection? He can not only reconstruct your bones, he can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of your fingers. It was in 1880 that Sir Francis Gold, he discovered the fingerprinting method. And he said that no two fingerprints, even in a million human beings, can be identical. And today, people use the fingerprinting method, especially the police, the FBI, the CIA, the CID, to identify the criminal, the robber, and this fingerprinting method, which we came to know in 1880, Almighty God describes in the Quran 1400 years ago. He can not only reconstruct your bones, he can reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of your fingers. I would like to end my talk by giving the last example of Prophet Takarata Gashon. Prophet Takarata Gashon is head of the Department of Anatomy in the University of Shanghai in Thailand. And he spent a great deal of time in doing research of pain receptors. We doctors, previously we thought that only the brain was responsible for the feeling of pain. Recently, we have come to know that besides the brain, there are certain receptors in the skin which are called as pain receptors which are responsible for the feeling of pain. Without the pain receptors, the human being cannot feel pain. That's the reason whenever a patient of burn injury comes to a doctor, he takes a pin and pricks it in the area of burn. If the patient feels pain, the doctor is happy. It's a superficial burn. The pain receptors, they are intact. If the patient does not feel pain, then the doctor is sad. The pain receptors have been destroyed. It's a deep burn. The Quran mentions in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 56, As to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them into the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skins so that they shall feel the pain. What does the Quran mean by saying that as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them into the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. Indicating that there is something in the skin which is responsible for the feeling of the pain. And today, the scientists and medical doctors have discovered that there are pain receptors in the skin which are responsible for the feeling of pain.